Tell me about him coming out. What do you remember about that dad, about your son coming out? It was just kind of hard to take because there was a lot of things to think about once you're told that by your son. I thought it was a choice. He was trying to convince me how it was, and he would explain things to me. Um, your son didn't come out. He was outed in his memory. Somebody saw him somewhere and came and told y'all, his parents, and his parents then questioned him about it. Do you recall that? No. I want you to understand this, the significance of you not understanding how your 16-year-old son came out. Outed as a gay male, and he felt totally abandoned by his father. Did you offer him your head, your heart, or your opinion about his gayness? I probably offered him opinion. I have never had a son that comes to me and tells me he's gay. Okay, do you raise a, a gay son different? Do you raise him like a man? Do you raise him like a woman? You know, these were questions I had inside of me. When you're a gay son in the household, you feel incredibly wrong. Who you are from the core of your being is wrong. And if there's nobody advocating on your behalf, that wrongness becomes the poison that you shoot in your arms every time you get the opportunity. I'm not here to challenge you. I'm here to help you understand that your son Shannon is a crystal meth addict. But ad addicts step up. I don't believe He's Shannon pleasure started. Pleasure seeking to I cover don't pain. believe Shannon started using crystal meth in high school. He probably started on something else because I. Daddy, he took his first blow of crystal meth when he was 16 years old, living under your roof. You don't have to believe it, I mean, I, but not I believing it is why we're here 12 years later and your son has one foot in the grave and one foot on the planet. Not to beat you up, but sweeping this under the rug and not calling a thing a thing is going to lead you to the cemetery. I've dealt with people on drugs. Who, who would that have been? It was my brother. Yeah, your brother. And what happened? He killed himself. How? He shot himself. After? After trying to get off drugs, uh, got clean for a little while. And then when um, he got paid, he went back to using in the crack house. Yeah. And then he got to the point where he must have felt hopeless and he shot himself. Were you aware of his inner life? What it was that would allow him to, to go use to drugs? the crack pipe? Yes, I'm totally aware of okay, it. OK, so what got him there? He uh, went on to a, um, a boat trip with my grandfather to Lake Erie. And it was an accident. My grandfather drowned. And Bill uh, tried to save him. And he was unsuccessful in saving him. And he blamed himself for the rest of his life. So we got a pathology going here. Men in your family being unsuccessful in saving other men. Your grandfather drowned. Your brother used drugs. We got a pathology and a pattern going on here. I do feel that the person who's addicted is not going to beat that until they're ready to beat it. They, they need all the support they can, but it's not going to happen until they're ready. You're absolutely right. And they're not going to get ready as long as people around them are soft shooing and not saying in their face, straight up, you are an addict and I'm not supporting you in it. You need to go get clean. Call me when that happens. And it's not until he hits rock bottom that you can realize, he can realize, that God made the rock. <laughs>